Yes, so fact is stranger than fiction. And Donald Trump has just come down with COVID-19. People still call it that, COVID-19. As you know, President Trump has been a staunch advocate against mass social distancing, uh, closing of businesses, which I can't say I totally disagree. Right here, I put a mask on it, you know, when I think I need it. But what does this now mean for the future of our economic health? And what does it mean for your money, your Benjamins? What is that actually going to do to our, our retirements and our savings? Well, right now, as I speak to you, the markets are down. I woke up this morning and the market was completely down in the pre-market hours. So what is this going to mean for the long term? Well, I'm going to talk to you today about the three ways you can actually take control into your own hands. But before we get into that, let's talk about some scenarios that could actually happen. As you know, President Trump and Joe Biden actually had a debate a few days ago, and they were about 12 feet away from each other. And being only 12 feet away from each other doesn't necessarily protect Joe Biden. Because as you may have heard, droplets can actually spread out almost 40 feet. So if he ends up becoming ill as well, when I say he, I mean Joe Biden, then we're going to most likely have to postpone the elections if we don't have to already postpone the elections because of just Donald Trump being, being ill. Now, the other thing that could happen is what if Donald Trump and both Joe Biden end up not being able to move forward and serve their duties? We're going to have to find other candidates which could completely throw the elections into the next year. The other thing that could happen is what happens if Donald Trump isn't able to perform his duties and Mike Pence also gets ill, isn't, isn't able to perform his duties, then guess who gets control? Nancy Pelosi. <coughs> now, not my cup of tea, but if we do get Nancy Pelosi, then I'm sure a lot of things are going to change. Now, speaking of Nancy Pelosi, we still have not come to terms on the new stimulus act. And the reason why is because now there is so much disconnect that we're so close, but yet so far. And now that the president is ill, it's going to take even longer because even if the House and the Senate both get their act together and they agree on something, the president still has to sign off and he's not around or he's not going to be around to sign off. I'm sure they'll figure out a way, but this could further delay everything from taking place because now some senators and some representatives are not going to want to be present for voting and the next recess is right around the corner. So I hope this doesn't make things worse. All right, so now let's talk about some of the things you can do to protect yourself and protect your money. Number one, you can sell everything you have and keep in mind, I'm not telling you to do this and I don't recommend you do any of these things. I recommend that you do your own research and you do what's best for you and your family. Never take this as advice. I'm just telling you what some people might do and I'm gonna tell you also at the end what I'm gonna do. So you can sell everything you have, all your assets, and then liquidate it and have the cash on the sideline. Once you have that money parked, now you can go back in and you can purchase everything back at a lower price in a few days, in a few weeks, or in a few months. And that way you'll make a crazy return on your investment, right? Sound like a good idea to me. Well, not exactly, because no one can actually time the market and people who do try to time the market usually end up losing. The best way to invest your money is time in the market, not timing the market. Now, the best thing I suggest you do is you watch to the end of this video and I'm going to tell you how smart investors invest their money. Number two, the thing you can do is you can short the market. Now, if you don't understand what that means, it's also called buying puts or buying shorts for companies and industries that you feel are going to be highly impacted and are going to go down in value. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, it's also called the options market. And back in 2007 and 2008, a lot of savvy investors, they bought options to short the real estate market and the mortgage market and they made billions of dollars and if you don't believe me there's a movie called the big short which explains exactly how it went down you smell that what is that what what's that smell a cologne no opportunity no money oh, okay i smell money okay somewhere along the line these bees and double bees went from a little risky to dog shit. Where's the trash? A lot of these triple Bs are going to zero too. And that, you're too close, is an opportunity. Okay. So you're offering us a chance to short this pile of blocks. How? With something called a credit default swap. It's like insurance on the bond. And if it goes bust, you can make 10 to one, even 20 to one return. 
Now, could that happen again? Absolutely, because anything is possible in this crazy world. We never thought we'd be talking about Donald Trump having COVID because he's the person who's probably the most protected in the world, but that happened. You know, we're, we're in a pandemic. I mean, never thought that happened, only on TV, but we're in it. So anything definitely is possible, but there are some big downsides to buying shorts. The biggest downside is that if the market goes up instead of down, you're gonna have a humongous obligation to pay back because when you buy shorts, there actually is no limit to your loss. You see, when you're long on a stock, and let's just say you, you do a call, you can lose all your investment. But when you're short, if the investment keeps going up in value, you can actually pay more than what that investment is worth initially. So be very careful when you're trading options, especially puts, not something I suggest. Now the third option, this is what I'm doing. And this is very important, so make sure you take notes. I'm not doing anything at all. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? You never want to react whenever you hear news because that is actually going to be the worst way to invest. If you're always on top of what's going on on the news and you're always constantly moving in and out of things, it's not going to work out. That's actually almost called day trading or swing trading. And most people who do that end up not making as much money as people who actually invest for the long term. You see, because only about 10% of people are ever profitable when they're doing that kind of movement and the odds are stacked up against you. So in my opinion, what you need to do is just don't listen to the noise. Don't listen to the day-to-day -day things. Yes, Donald Trump being sick uh, will lead to some uncertainty in the markets and uncertainty is the biggest enemy of the markets, of any kind of investment. So the more uncertainty we continue to have, the higher uh, likelihood is for our assets to drop but they will recover. There'll be days when the markets will be back. There'll be days when the market's much higher than it is now, but we just have to be calm, patient, and don't ever react because the news is going to sensationalize everything you hear and everything that happens because all they're doing is trying to get you to tune in and stay watching. So just calm down, be easy. And what I do suggest is this, as the market continues to go down, which it probably will, because there's days where it's down, I suggest you go back in and you buy. If you have any money on the sideline or if you recently sold any assets, use that money whenever you see red days, not green days, because we're humanly programmed or our minds are programmed to always think that green means good and red means bad. Fire is good. Fire is good. Yes, fire, fire is our friend. But red is actually a discount. So imagine if you walked into a department store and your favorite pair of Jimmy Choo's or your favorite pair of Jordans were on sale for 50% off. What would you do? You would probably buy them and you probably double up on buying them. Well, the same thing goes when you're buying assets such as real estate or stocks. What you want to do is wait for those assets to go on sale. When you see red, especially big dip red days, those are the days that you're going to want to buy. So try to reprogram your brain into investing when the market is going down. Now, I'm not saying you're ever going to uh, hit the best day or the best time to purchase because that's again called timing the market. What we're going to do is called dollar cost averaging. And what that means is that we're actually going to continue to buy in on down days. And in the long run, we're going to make a lot of money because we're buying everything when it goes on sale. And then when it goes back up in value, we're going to make big profits. Now, if you don't think that the company you're investing in has a chance of recovering, then don't invest in it because you should only invest into companies and into assets that you feel strongly about, that you've done enough research about, because please don't take my word for anything I'm saying here. This is not investing advice. You should always make sure that what you're investing in is something you truly believe in and that you're willing to lose that money if it goes south. So don't, don't put it all on black. That's what I'm saying. Because if you're, if you're that kind of investor, you're probably better off going to Atlantic City or Las Vegas. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about stimulus. Yes, the stimulus bill is supposed to get voted on and it's supposed to pass one of these days, right? We keep hearing that, we keep hearing that, and I know a lot of people are waiting to get some relief. Now, the whole situation with Donald Trump is going to delay this, and for sure it will, and I'm not sure how much longer it will delay it because remember, at the very end, Donald Trump still has to sign off on whatever bill gets passed. But before it even gets to him, remember, Republicans, Democrats, it doesn't matter who, but the House and the Senate, they have to get together and come up with an idea. But if they're scared about contracting or you know getting sick because maybe he's been around some of these people, they may choose not to go in. They may choose to go on recess and wait for things to blow over. And this could easily 
go into November if we don't get some kind of uh, action here in October. So I hope it doesn't get to that because there's a lot of people that are waiting for that money. If you want to learn more about real estate or investing, you can easily join our Discord group by following the link down below. I'll answer any of your questions there. And if you're a real estate agent and you want a free training course on how to make more money in real estate, also follow the link down below and submit your request and I'll send you the free training course right away. So thank you guys for watching and if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a strong thumbs up and consider joining the family by hitting the subscribe button and a notification bell so you can be alerted whenever we do any more videos on financial education, real estate, or stocks. Thank you guys and we'll see you next time. But before you go, don't forget to check out these videos right here.